heard me talk about in the past um, with free agency, maybe in the draft, um, there's favorites that arise, and uh, we feel like that's what we got tonight. And we couldn't be more excited. Um, two really impact players uh, on both sides of the ball. You know, um, you know, starting with Jameer, you know, um, he was definitely a guy that uh, we had identified early on in the process. Um, I really kind of just saw him really for the first time um, when I went to uh, the Texas Alabama game and uh, just kind of it just he kind of stuck with me since then. But, you know, look, it's like a handful of favorite players in the draft. Um, and some of those guys were taken be, before we were able to pick. Um, but uh, Jameer was certainly one of those guys. Um, so we were just thrilled. Uh, he's a very explosive. He's a weapon. Um, you know, obviously he can do it all as a runner, but you know what he can do as a receiver and a lot of other things. So his versatility, what he's going to bring to the offense, we're really excited about. And then Jack, he's another one that just became a favorite. And, you know, um, first time looking at Jack, um, you know, I kind of thought, you know, okay, I've seen these kind of linebackers before he's big and he's a plugger, but actually, no, he's not. Uh, the, the, the more you look at him, the more athletic his traits came out and became very, very visible. And then, you know, you start looking at the athletic numbers that he's produced in terms of a lot of top five athletic categories uh, among all the linebackers in this year's draft. And for a six, four and a half, 250 pound inside linebacker, um, that was pretty impressive. But then we're not even getting into, you know, two time captain. We're not getting into extremely instinctive, extremely smart, extremely physical, um, very versatile. He can do it in the run game, in the pass game. So um, again, we're just ecstatic about both those players. And um, we had we had a really, really good night. <laughs> Perceptions here that these positions are not um, as valued in, in drafts, right? Running backs haven't gone above 24 in the last five years. Yep. Off ball linebackers don't typically go that high. Yep. But what is the, what is the balance there of, of being in love with a player and you know positional value, I guess, in the draft? Yeah, just like I told you guys in the past, um, they're they're football players, and you know if they if you believe that they can have an impact for you on the football field, then you just go ahead and take them. Um, and that's just, I mean, starting off with Jameer, you know, um, even when we were, uh, had six and 18, you know, um, obviously we had thoughts of, you know, maybe at 18, but, you know, we didn't feel great about it. And so when we were able to select him at 12, that's when all the text started coming in of <laughs> would have been gone by 15. Well, like, like not, you know, just a lot of a lot of picks, a lot of people saying they want to trade up, they want to get in, you know what I mean? So I wouldn't have even felt good of him staying at 18. But again, it's not about just don't pick a running back because that's not how we really view him. Um, and then it's the same thing about don't pick an off ball linebacker. That's not really how we view Jack. So, you know, if you put him in boxes, you put on a sheet of paper, and you put and you run mock draft analytics, you know, um, yeah, you can come up with those stats. But you know, all the hours and research and all the time that we put in, um, you know, in terms of lo looking at these players, it comes very, very visible um, that what kind of impact that they, they can bring. And um, if you look at the totality of the draft, when we selected Jack, he was our highest rated player that was left on, on the board. And um, it was it was actually, you know, by a uh, good margin. So, you know, um, you can look at, you know, positions and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, especially in this draft, if you if you try to get cute and you're saying, oh, well, let me get, well, no, there was no other, uh, whatever you would tab as a premium position. Uh, oh, you better get a pass rusher. Oh, you better get a tackle. You better, no, that's not, that's not what the case was. You know, we had him as a highest rated player and the same with Jameer. Jameer was a highest rated player. So um, we'll just take take the best players for us. I've always said that that's what we're going to do. Um, and we pick, we find players that fit us and what we're about. We're, we're about as a culture um, from a character standpoint, from a tangible standpoint, from an intelligence standpoint. But uh, like the talent is one thing, but these players fit us. And that's why we're thrilled about it. We'll talk about that. Alabama guys, I mean, it's the second year in a row you get a guy, Alabama number 12, moved up, moved down this year. Talk about the decision to 
move down there and get him at number 12? Yeah, um, you know, I, um, I really didn't put the two 12s together, actually. That's a good job, Eric. But, um, you know, but no, yeah, it's, um, you know, obviously that's one of the, you know, most respected programs in college football. And, you know, you got, I got a ton of respect for Coach Saban and, and, and what he does down there. And um, you kind of know what kind of product that you're, that, that he's putting out, what kind of football player he's putting out. Um, so, um, you know, it just happened to be that he was one of our top players that we really, really liked. And I'm um, just glad that we were in a position to get him. But, you know, that's a that's a tough conference to play in, and um, the type of production that he was able to get uh, coming just from Georgia Tech uh, year one at Alabama, um, he, he made his presence felt early and um, had a really good year, but we're extremely excited about him. Might be starting to materialize, or you're starting to think about that sort of. Could you walk us through that process when you're at six? You guys are on the clock, and maybe someone you've wanted has has just gone or recently gone. How do you reassess? How did you pivot? Did you guys have multiple trade partners? You sort of walk us through. Yeah, yeah. No, we 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 had some calls out, um, you know, and we had some things kind of lined up in case it didn't fall the way that we thought, you know, with the pool of players that we were considering at at, at six, and um, so you just kind of have to do that preparation. You just never know how it's going to fall um, in terms of who's going to – because you can have things lined up, but then, you know, it's all – mostly it's contingent on players that's going to be available. So it's never really a sure thing. Uh, but, you know, it just really happened to work out perfect uh, when we made the trade with Arizona. And, um, you know, everybody's board is different. Everybody has different rosters, different needs. They're looking for different things. And um, it doesn't always line up that way, but it happened to line up that way tonight. And, um, you know, it was it, it worked out well. Similarly, I'm just wondering, was there any action on when it came down to number 18? Did, did people call about number 18? No, no, we didn't, we, we didn't get much action at 18. Um, we just kind of just stayed. But I will say, you know, we didn't really even – think of trying to get out either um as soon as we saw kind of the grade that we had on jack and we were just i was more excited just to actually get the guy at 18. um you know yeah we could have got cute and tried to trade back and all that stuff but no it's um he was there was a uh different level that was going to start after you um if you were going to pass on him. So um, we just we felt really, really good about it. Um, it was really kind of a no brainer, really. Um, you know, we had a, had a good feel that he would have been there. But um, yeah, we just didn't want to mess around. Mock drafts and projections, obviously. But because these guys seem to have gone higher than, is this really a case where you really did have to trust the things you value? as much as you ever have because they were somewhat out of the norm of what others thought? I mean, just like I say all the time, I, I, I do respect the mock drafts and I understand that people put a lot of work and put, put a lot of time in those things. And uh, But like I told you guys last year, last time when I was up here uh, before the draft is, you know, uh, um, those same people that are putting together those mock drafts, uh, they're often not privy to some information um, and, and it's not their fault. That's not their job, you know? So, um, but I'll say all the work that's put into the mock drafts, uh, um, I, there's no disrespect, but uh, I, I, I would guarantee you that we've put in um, a lot more work in, 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 into that and in, in, into those players and, you know, a lot of character research, a lot of evaluations, um, a, a lot of uh, deep digs. So, you know, um, Again, I, I respect it. I look at them. You know, um, they, 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 they do bring value, but that doesn't really move me. I didn't really look at, you know, uh, man, Jameer Gibbs, He's uh, he's been mocking in the 50s. Now, that one I, I did laugh at because I just looked at just – if you look at the talent of the player, you know, and then you look at the totality of the draft, I, I didn't – I didn't think that was even remotely close. So, um, but again, I understand if you look at just analytics and numbers, you look like, again, running back. That you know what I mean? Like if you look at it very static in numbers and black and white, then I can see where someone come up with that. But no, when you come across a special player like that, you're just convicting. You just you just get them. So, I hope that answers your question. Um, you know, I just again, it's no disrespect to the mock drafts. I get it, man. It's not the guys that. 
everybody had in the in their mock drafts and all that stuff. And re- frankly, we, we we don't care. We just we feel really confident about the work that we put in and what those guys are going to do on, on the field. And I think our fans are going to be really really proud and really excited about what they see. And I'm not saying like a year and a two year like we believe that these guys are like ready to go right now. Yeah, it's a very good question. Uh, like I said, um, you know, last week before the draft, uh, this is a different draft. And so, um, you know, I've always said you don't kind of you don't um, you don't draft with the depth chart. But at the same time, you um, you just want to get the best football players for you. So um, once we made the trade with Arizona and we were able to still get 34 um, and still get those two players, we were pretty excited. So when the first round ended, um, you know, there's still some some good players that we'd, we'd be excited about. Uh, whether we stay or not, that remains to be seen. Um, you know, you still had the flexibility of going up or down. But um, I think we're in a really good spot. Before, when you have a pick early in the second round like that and people sleep on the draft for a night, does that add to the value when you're early in the second round? Yeah, you know, I think it's a little bit to that. You know, um, you know, uh, I did, um, you know, I did get some calls about, you know, the back half of the first round, you know, you know, I wanted to come up um, just kind of looking at the totality of, you know, who was left. Um, we, we felt pretty confident of just staying right there at 34, but it is good to kind of let the dust settle. You know, you can kind of restack it, reshuffle it, and um, just kind of see, you know, like what really is the best move is the best move to see what's available is the best move to go up is the best move to stay where you're at go down. So um, I, I feel really good. It's been a while since um, me personally, I was in a regime that had that pick. Um, it's been a minute, but you know, we, we feel really good about it. We're excited. Very much right. at, at Alabama. Um, you can see some overlap, I guess, with what DeAndre does on the field in terms of his receiving skills. Yeah. Um, you know, we asked you kind of similar questions when you signed a bunch of cornerbacks with what with, with that meant for, for Jeff. So um, what what does this mean for DeAndre, if anything, to you? Yeah, I mean, DeAndre, he's still on our roster. He's still uh, part of our team. He's still under contract with us. Um, he's a dynamic football player, so um, it um, it hadn't really changed the math uh, there yet. But, um, but you know, um, it is early, you know, so, um, but, you know, it didn't really change. We just we kind of put Jameer uh, in his own in his own separate box and just got really excited about the player. It didn't really have any bearing of, of DeAndre. Last week's, uh, suspension. Last week's suspensions do anything to you for the draft in terms of adding depth at the receiver position that took a hit there? Yeah, I mean, you obviously think about it. Um, you know, when you lose, you know, multiple players at one position, um, it's pretty obvious that you got to kind of be be rational and be sound and look at all your options. Um, but I'll tell you, that's that's another thing about uh, Jameer is that, again, I know people put him running back, but um, he does a lot of special things in the passing game. Um, so, you know, that's another component that we're really, really excited about. But, um, but yeah, it's you're, you're aware of it, and um, it, it's not overlooked. Sorry to answer this, but you, you mentioned the Texas Alabama, Alabama game. Bajon Robinson was on that field, yeah. too. What was it about Adams that – has stayed with you this whole time, I guess. About Gibbs? Oh, yeah. Oh, Gibbs, sorry, sir. Yeah, I mean, I just thought that he was um, he was just so explosive. He was so dynamic. And, again, I think that um, if you're asking, like, the difference between Bijan and Gibbs, um, I, just, I actually think they're different players. Um, I, I, I think, you know, um, one one guy is probably more of a bell cow running back, um, very very talented player who's going to be a really good player in this league, and he's going to make a lot of plays. But I think that our guy gives a very very talented player that's going to make a lot of plays. I just think that they're different flavors, but they were both um, really high impact players. Um, but you know, there was just something about Gibbs, and again, it's something about Gibbs for us. You know, it's not about what Bijan would be for us; it's about what would Gibbs be for us, and so that's why we had him in such high regard. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.